You know the name of the business is <clears throat> First Impressions Video and if you track the genesis of that, I, I named it that way because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And it's interesting because that phrase was attributed to a lot of different people up to and including Walt Disney World, but it wasn't really attributed to him. Um, but it's, it's really interesting because when you think about event videography, which is the, the majority of what I do, you don't get an opportunity to go out there and yell, cut, set up, take two, if it's a wedding or if it's a conference or a seminar or some, some special event. You just don't get a second chance to do it. So you got to get it right the first time. And that means you have to be prepared. Um, interestingly enough, because I work in the visual art, you would think that I would show up here and have video after video after video to show, uh, and I don't. The ironic thing there is that it's just like the old cobbler story. The cobbler's so busy making shoes for clients that his kids run around barefooted. Now well, there is my problem. You know, I've, I've been so busy of late, and I've been trying desperately to refashion and retool my demo roll, reel, um, and just haven't had a chance to get it finished so, so I could preview it here. Having said that, you can always see my current demo reel on my website, so I would invite you to go there. Um, I also have a Facebook business page, I have a uh, LinkedIn business page, and so I'm very, very visible. And as I mentioned before, and even in a blog that I wrote, um, SEO is very important to what you do, and Sean can certainly attest to that. I'm getting calls now from as far away as North Carolina for people, and I say, well, how'd you hear about me? And they say, well, we Googled you. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, what I want to do today is walk through uh, some summaries of 15 experts in the absence of a video to actually show you about what I do. I'm Mark. I thought he was going to walk up and pinch me in the backside or something. Because <laughs> that's Mark would do that just to, just to get a reaction out of me, see? Uh, but you know, I'm not thankful. <laughs> See the power of suggestion. You, you, a good director knows how to direct. You know, he calls a shot, he acts, <clears throat> job done. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you by walking through all uh, of these comments uh, from the 15 experts, but there are a couple of high points uh, that I would like to touch on that speaks to you know, why video is relevant, why if you're not doing it, you should be, and if you've got older video, you might want to consider retooling it, whether you use me or if you do it yourself like we talked about two weeks ago, or someone else does it, just make sure it gets done. Uh, so if you think about budgeting, uh, the, the 15 experts that are cited in this, uh, in this summary, uh, which I got permission to reprint because I know some of these guys, um, you can see that they're talking about budgets of ten dollars to $50,000. Now, you look <laughs> around that and I see glazed, glazed eyes and people rolling their heads. It's like, you want to spend what? Uh, but just as fast, later in that paragraph, it talks about you, you really don't have to spend that. In fact, one of my lines on my little 15 second clip online says, great video doesn't have to break the bank. And if you've seen that, you see a big hand come in and smack the piggy bank and he explodes in 100,000 pieces. Somebody asked me if that was my hand, it's not. Uh, but it could have been mine. But anyway, the, the point being, you, you don't have to spend that kind of money. I mean, if you're a big ad agency and you got a big national or international client, where you're going to have a full-on production, and certainly you could ex spend that kind of money. But we're talking about small business owners, entrepreneurs, and there's just no way that you would need to spend that kind of money. So anyway, uh, what types of videos should you produce? Uh, there's some, some comments about tofu, mofu, and bofu. <laughs> and tofu is not cheese curd. Uh, it actually talks about top of funnel, middle of funnel bottom of funnel. So those that are actively involved in sales processes would certainly know what that means. And so the video should reflect where you are in the selling cycle so that the story that your video tells articulates what you want that person to do. Uh, is there a rhyme or reason to selecting a mood? Yeah, probably. Um, I like to do things with some energy. Uh, the one we did with Guy where we actually took the footage that he, so he, he shot himself in Antwerp. You know, you throw a little music behind it that gives it some energy, uh, and you can actually go between motion pictures and stills, and still impart uh, action and energy in what you're doing in the finished product. Uh, how can you pack the biggest punch in video messaging? I think humor works real well, but you gotta be careful with humor, because you always have to think about the audience that's gonna see it, and the broader the audience, the more careful you probably wanna 
because you you know we've become such a politically correct uh, society these days that you're probably going to piss off everybody no matter what you do. But at least be thoughtful about the message that you're conveying. But I, I still believe that humor works well. Uh, professional quality audio. Uh, if your audio sucks, your video sucks. It's as simple as that. And so I make it a point to have a good audio feed coming in. I use a minimum of two microphones, sometimes three, sometimes even four, depending on where the audio sources are coming from. But it's paramount so that when, you, again, you're, you're putting that video up, whether it's on YouTube, Vimeo, or you're broadcasting it at a conference or convention, that the audio provides the proper support to the video imagery that you see. Uh, can you maximize your investment by repurposing your video content? Absolutely. Uh, typically, when I go in and shoot, you know, I'm not only shooting the activity that I was commissioned to shoot, but I'm capturing a lot of what's called B-roll. So I'm meandering around if it's a company setting and shooting people at work, shooting product being developed, shooting conferences and meetings going on, a lot of ancillary activity above and beyond the initial shoot itself if it's, say, a talking head interview with the CEO. You want a lot of other activities to support what he's saying. You can always retool that, that, that footage that you shot, and rather than having to go out for another production day, you just take that material and you re-edit it and you put it back out. So that's easy to do. Uh, can you keep up a regular publishing cadence? Uh, Sean and I have talked a lot about this notion of episodic television as a way of conveying video. And Mark and I have actually had the conversation initially where we're actually going to sit with him and spend an entire day. And he's going to take various component subjects within his, his practice and break them down into one to two minute little snippets that speak to each one of those subject areas. And you can do that in a day. And again, once again, you talk about repurposing, you can do that over and over again. You can retool it, you can repackage it, and, and it fits. And you can go in and do a one-day shoot, capture 10, 15 of those short segments, and those would last you three, four, five years. So again, if you hear a price quote, you say, well, geez, that sounds a little steep. I said, well, think about how long that will serve you and amortize it over the total period of time that it would be used, and there you go. Then it winds up being quite affordable, frankly. Let's see what else. Uh, you're ready. Um, you know, you've heard some of the stuff from this, and again, I didn't want to read it verbatim because you can do that. You don't need me to do that for you. But there's some good stuff in there that talks about, you know, things to be thinking about. So what I'd like to do now, since I probably have a little time left, is just throw it open for questions because, you know, we've talked a lot um, about what I do. If you look at the back of my business card, it summarizes most of the genres that I shoot to. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. And anybody in this room knows somebody that's got something going on that fits one of those categories. So it's an easy way to tip it. With that, Kathy. So if I hire you to come and video my business, do I have to write the script too? You don't have to. Um, and um, well, what we would do, and for something like that, I might even invite Sean to join me, uh, especially if it's going to hit the web, because he's going to want to be thinking about really robust keywords and phrases that help him optimize your website. So it's, it's kind of a, a tag team where there'd be a joint conversation, and what comes out of that conversation would represent how we would present you in the video. Okay. What else? Yes, sir. We've been uh, <clears throat> talking in our, our power partner group about, um, you know, uh, the moment of either someone uh, presents a piece of jewelry for a, an engagement or a special birthday. How can, how can I refer you to, you know, document that moment? What would be a good uh, lead-in for me with my clients to, to talk to them about that? It would be as simple as... You're making a significant investment for this ring, and I can only imagine the emotion and the impact of that moment when you pop the lid open on that box and say, will you marry me? And wouldn't it be neat to have that recorded for posterity? Well, I just happen to know a guy that does that <laughs> among so many things that he does. Can I give you his card? Excellent. There you go. I know a couple you could do it. Yeah. Ah, see? Oh, oh, yes, yes, right. yes, 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 yes. And then they grew. Will you hide in the bushes? <laughs> um, depending.
depends on how big the bush is, because I'm a pretty big guy. <laughs> of the restaurant? It's a paparazzi <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, paparazzi shot. Are you getting too busy to convert um, tapes to DVDs? Um, I don't do that at all anymore. Uh, quite honestly, uh, it was a huge pain in the behind. Uh, unfortunately, people, and, and I was guilty of this too. I mean, you think back to the old VHS and beta days, you could set different speeds of recording on it, you know, regular play, slow play, and extended play. So if you had a 120 minute cassette, you could actually get 240 minutes on it. Well, that's imagery that has to be transferred and transcoded. So then it's four hours, it's not two. But the client sees 120 minutes on the cassette, on the cartridge, and they say, well, it's only two hours. No, it's not. And you gotta have really good, robust equipment for that. And as I found that it was, it was taking so much of my time doing something that I didn't like as much as I like shooting in the field or even editing, I just moved away from that. Now, if you want someone to do that that's got forensic level transfer equipment, I would recommend that you call Brian Clark at DVD Your Memories. He's very, very good and he's very reasonable. Short of that, Costco will do it. Okay. Do you have a drone for aerial footage? I do not. Uh, the question was, since we're recording this, is uh, do I have a drone? Uh, I invested in two brand new uh, cameras this year, and so I decided not to make the drone <laughs> jump. Uh, I've got a friend that will partner with me if I need a drone shot for anything. Okay. Um, so, no, not well, yet. You can, you, you have people that can yes. take care of that. Yes. A uh, similar question that was asked uh, before the meeting started is, do I do live streaming yet? Uh, and it, the, the answer is uh, uh, a qualified yes, but that's always going to add more cost to the assignment because depending on what you want streamed, you've got to allow for a single camera pushing that streaming through a computer into a hosting um, space so it can be transmitted out. And so there's going to be a, some additional costs associated with that technology and possibly another operator to have to run that so that I, as the videographer, can pay attention to what I'm doing roaming around. Um, I think it was Kathy that asked regarding a funeral. And, uh, and yes, it's very doable. Uh, I think you mentioned that somebody was going to periscope the thing. We're starting to see that. And, uh, and I just uh, offer a word of caution for Periscope. It's a cool idea. It's a wonderful app for little short bursts and segments, something like we're doing here. Uh, I might bring my smartphone and set it up on a tripod uh, so that we can try that once and see how it works. But it, it's doable. But you have to have it on a steady fixture because if you try to handhold over the duration of something like a Catholic funeral, You'd be shaking like this at the end of it, and your your image you you wouldn't want to see that on a big screen. You didn't get the warning. Is that the problem? No, I didn't get the warning. They left it away. Uh, what else? Did I see another hand? All right, just uh, Patrick. Last question. Do you have a minimum charge? Not not so much a minimum charge, and kind of like John said, everything I do is custom to the extent that every environment's different, people make it different. Uh, my day rate is typically seven fifty, uh, which translates to an hourly rate of about seventy five bucks an hour. Okay, thanks very much.